I'm just excited. Um, I feel that the Lord is just moving. You know, uh, this, every time, every season, the Lord does different things. We started off 2015. We came into the house of prayer, and we were just praying and praying and praying. And some of us, we feel like we hit a wall. Anyone with me? Yeah? Sometimes it feels like you're hitting a wall, and, and um, you know what? A wall is just an opportunity for breakthrough. It's just an opportunity to break through because we serve the Balparazim, the God of our breakthrough. Amen. This is who we serve. And today, you know, as I was coming in, um, I asked the Lord, you know, the Lord's just been speaking so many things. And, you know, uh, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then the Lord asked me to, I didn't even think about this. I, um, when I was in India exactly almost two years ago, the Lord gave me a t uh, some points, and it was in the, I, those of you who know me, I've got seven to eight box files of talks, okay? It's seven to eight, um, and it's, um, by the grace of God, it's alphabetized, topic-wise. So if someone were to ask me what I would run out of the house with, if there was a fire, that's what I'm taking, okay? Because some of this is... I come back to it and I'm like, oh my gosh, did you give this to me, God? And I, I was just, so I came in and I'm asking the Lord to speak over us. Now, we come into God's house primarily not to meet with one another. That's an added benefit. It is. I love coming into God's house. I love getting the hugs, you know, um, some of the tall people, they make me feel bad, okay? They'll be like this, oh, come, Preeti. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I make sure I balance it off to some of the other people, and I'm like, ah, oh, come, come, come. You know, so I've trained all the kids to come and hug me so I feel better. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, yeah. So, and, you know, I just love it, and, and it, it just to be in God's presence and with his people and you know, sometimes when you're hugging them, they get hit by the power of God. You get hit by the power of God. And you're like, oh, and you're just so happy. But as much as we love one another, we're here to meet with God. Amen. We're here to hear what he has to say over us. I mean, you know, you, you, how many of you go, I mean, I think I'm not going to ask this in this country. But I'll ask it. How many go to your parents for advice? <laughs> You know what? I go to my mom sitting over there. If I'm facing a situation, I call her up. I'll say, what's your opinion? Because pretty much what I've done, not all of it, okay, she's been there and done that. Some of it, it happened. what happens in Bangalore stays in Bangalore. <laughs> you know, as a city, okay? But at the end of the day, you know, I, I, we are here because we want to hear from God. So let's just close our eyes. Oh. Um. hear from you. We want to talk to you. 
We want you to talk to us. We want to see you. We want to be seen by you. We want to love you and we want to be loved by you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Our God is good. Our God is good. I had a dream. I had a dream um, a few nights back. I've never had a dream so intense before. It was one of the most clearest, one of the most life dreams I've ever had. And in that dream, I'm, I'm with some of you standing there, Rakesh is standing there, and we're all just, just being. We're just living, we're just standing, we're talking, we're just being, you know, you're just chilling. And as I'm standing there, I, I, I can see the attack of the enemy. The enemy is coming and he's attacking us, but we're quite, we're quite well protected. Some are getting hit a little bit. Some are not getting hit. Those who are in the center are, are not so much, but those who are forming the walls are getting hit. You know, they're getting hit a bit, and they're it's just, but they're not getting affected. Amen. And the enemy comes in. Yeah, go on. Excellent. And the enemy comes in, and I can see him. He comes flying. And then... While I'm standing there in the midst, he takes me away. He takes me away. He takes me to what seems, he takes me higher. And as he's taking me, I could hear the angelic realm saying, this is not good. And as he says this, is, as they say this is not good, I can see Rakesh looking up. And I knew that the enemy was going to do something that was absolutely radical which was really one of his greatest attacks. And in that dream, I'm taken up and Rakesh turns around and he looks and he sees and he says, sort of like, you can see, he's got me, but I'm not affected because I'm watching this. And I knew that the Lord was teaching me something. And in that, the enemy does something and you can see the whole church, the whole church, the angelic realm saying, Oh, no. It was the most oh, no moment I've ever heard. And as I'm turning around, I'm seeing me, but it, I'm seeing me, but I know that's me. And as I turn around, my legs are all right. My hands are all right. My body's all right. My hair is all right. But I have no face. I have no face. And the Lord says, beware of the face theft of your identity beware of the theft of your identity and this is what the church is being stolen off the very identity that God has given us it is our identity that he wants to take away from us you read Genesis 3 he goes up to Eve and he says God does not want you to be like him he lies and takes away the identity. I tell you the truth. Adam and Eve were made in the very image of God. They had their identity and they were asked to do something to get that identity. Why did Adam Eve? Why did Adam eat? Because he wanted the identity that he already had. And this is the attack on the church. Our very identities are being taken. I am made in the image of my father. I am made in the image of my father. All that is his is mine. All that belongs to him is mine. Do not forget who you are. In the book of, in ha the book of Habakkuk. It is not Habakkuk. It is the book. And on Friday when we were having the prayer room, I tell you something. If you are part of this house, 
you be here in the prayer room. This is what you are called to do at this season. I was looking at this, you know, tithing. We speak about, we speak about 10%. 10%, 10%. Do we spend 10% of our time in the house of God? What is our excuse? 10% of our, how much percent of our day we do we spend doing other things? I don't even want to say what we do. 10%. Five hours in a week be to church on time. Nine o'clock, 10, 11, 12, one, two, five hours. Five hours for God in a week. That's great. Two hours in a prayer room, seven, that's great. Two more hours, nine, that's great. Tide your time. Hallelujah. The book of Habakkuk says this. It says, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the wines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Basically, though there is no fruit of my labor, though there is no result, there is no reward, there is no breakthrough, there is nothing, no victory, no nothing. He's still God. He's still God. And it says, yet, say 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 yet. yet. I will rejoice in my God. This is a true prophet of God. Yet I will rejoice in my God. Hallelujah. You know why Habakkuk could say this? Because he knew who he was and he knew who God was. If you know who God is, and if you know who you are, I am the child of the living God. No enemy takes my face, for I am in the image of the living God. I am like my father. Hallelujah. Says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. The joy, I will joy. Say, I will joy. I will joy. I will joy. This joy means jumping around. This joy means dancing around. This joy means leaping. This joy does not mean going, I hate you, God. I hate you, God. I hate you, God. Ah, Hallelujah. That's not what this joy means. Habakkuk knew who his God was. In the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the destruction. Yet I will rejoice in my God. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The church needs to get off their chairs. Wake up. The church needs to get off their chairs. Saying, give me, 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 give me. And then I will praise you. I like what John of Kennedy said. He said, ask not what you can do for your country. Ask not what what your country can do for you. But ask what you can do for your country. Yet, though the fig tree may not blossom, though the vines yield no fruit, though the labor, the labor, the labor, the labor of the olives give you no fruit, Yet I will rejoice in our God. Yet I will. This is confidence, people. This is confidence. This is confidence. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet. It's thinking about deers. Not oh deer. I've never seen a deer before it takes a leap going, Will I won't, I will I won't, I will I won't, I will I won't, will I? No. They leap for joy. They leap for joy. And they go higher, higher, and they go higher. Because they know their God. I 
haven't, the, la the last time I heard of a mountain goat that fell because it didn't look before its leap. The only people to look before they leap is us. I said this, Jeevan and Sarius, son, you know, sometimes we place him on the table. He don't care if we are ready to catch him. No care. Whatsoever. He knows any adult within that vicinity to catch him will jump up and catch him. You can see him going. When you start taking your preparation of faith, the angels are being sent to catch Yes, yeah, you're taking your preparation of faith. The Lord is saying, there's my child. If you don't catch her, I'll have to come down. This is scripture. He makes my, he changes me. When I trust him, he changes my feet. And makes my feet like the feet of a deer. I am a climber. I will climb. Because he changes me. He changes me. The, the, what we don't know is who we are. We don't know who we are. We don't know. We don't know why we are here. We don't. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles to Genesis. We're going to go to the very beginning. Not your neighbor and say, we're going to go to the very beginning. Habakkuk said, though the fig tree may not blossom, though the vine yield no fruit, though the labor of the olives fail, your circumstance does not determine, does not determine who you are. Just because you're struggling today does not mean you are less a child of God. You're just being positioned for your next victory. And the key is to know who you are. The key is to know who you are. We struggle because we don't know. Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, they did not know. They were made in the very image of God. And they fell away because they didn't know. Many of us are bound by fear. Bound by limitations. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm not called. Who says? Who says you're not called? Who says you're too young? Who says you're too old? Who says you're too tall? Who says you're too short? Who says you're not anointed enough? Because our God is the anointer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No man determines our anointing. No woman determines our anointing. I was telling somebody, if you are available, so is he. If you're available, so is he. Our God can give ability. If he wants to paint this room, he'll use who is here today. He can't use you if you're sitting in front of your couch, on your couch in front of your TV. Hallelujah. Adam and Eve. Did you know that God walked in the garden? God walked in, e in Eden. Do you know why he walked? Because he wanted to meet with them. They were the place of fellowship. Adam and Eve were the place of fellowship. God came down from heaven and said, come, let us walk together. Adam and Eve were the place of fellowship. 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 And at the point of their sin, it was that very fellowship that was broken. And man fell short of the glory of God, for the glory of God lifted off man that day. 
and Jesus had to come. The son of the living God comes. And you know what he purchases? He purchases you and me. He purchases you and me. Why? So we become the place of fellowship once again. So that we become the place of fellowship once again. Adam and Eve, they're very important in our Christian walk. For at the beginning of time, the Lord took clay and breathed life into it. He took clay and he molded it and he made it, but there was nothing in it till he breathed life into it. Till he breathed life into it. There was nothing to it till his life came and abided within that clay and man was formed. And that very spirit departed. Till the day our Lord Jesus rose again. Returned into the place of the meeting of the disciples. And he takes breath in John 21. And he breathes upon the disciples. And once again, you and I become the place of fellowship. Once again, you and I become the place of God's presence. We become the, you know, we use this word temple so much. What does a temple mean? For us, the temple is a building. But in Genesis 2, Adam and Eve were the temple of the living God. And in, in, in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he says, you and I are the temple of the living God. We have been restored greater than the Old Testament. If we only knew who we are. If we only knew that we are the temple of the living God. People came and asked, come and ask, what is the vision of this church? We say revival. What is revival? Revival is the freedom of relationship before the fall of man. Revival is the freedom of relationship before the fall of man. When you and I are so sure of who we are, we are not even concerned with sin because we don't even know what sin is. Where there's no concern of past because there is no past. The past has been erased. Hallelujah. Are you with me? The restoration of relationship greater than the beginning of time. This is revival. This is revival where people are free to meet with the God of liberty. Are you with me? Are you with me? In the Old Testament, the greatest time that they ever had was in 2 Chronicles 7 when Solomon built a temple and the presence and the glory of God came into that temple so that not a single minister could stand and they were still talking about it. But in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, there is an outpouring of the Spirit that has not stopped till this day. Hallelujah. The temple is you and I. The temple is you and I. You and I are the temple of the living God. Hallelujah. This is the restoration. This is the restoration, knowing that I am a child of God and he is my father. This is restoration. Are you with me? And which temple am I building? This one. This one. And when you and I, when one temple stands next to another, stand next to another. Come on, come on, girls, come on. When the temple comes and stands, this becomes a place of God's residence. This becomes a place of his outpouring because this is the place of contact. Are you with me? This is the temple. This is the temple that we are building. Not just one connected to God, two connected to God, three connected to God, four connected, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten till an old city, till a whole city, a whole city, a whole city 
a whole city, a whole city knows who they are and they will stand up and host the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? The location of the temple is very important. Solomon built that temple in 2 Chronicles 7 on Mount Moriah. And on that mount, there was a point of interaction. Abraham took his only son and offered as a sacrifice. And when that sacrifice was offered, heaven broke through. Heaven opened and heaven came down and gave a substitute ram Amen. in the place of that son. Heaven opened. That was a place of open heavens. And where Abraham encountered the Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, the God who gives, the God who sees, it was on that mountain where there was a breakthrough. And on that mountain, hundreds of years later, David meets the prophet Gad, not God. Gad comes up to David and says, go up to that mountain. And he meets, he meets with his God. And when it is time, when within his heart there is a burning to build something for God, he tells his son, go to the place of breakthrough. I tell you something. If there has been a breaking on this wall, however you rebuild it, that will be a point of weakness. It is easy to break through again. It is easy to break through again. And I said, Lord, how does it, how does it affect me? And he said, you are a place of breakthrough. Amen. You have encountered the living God. Within your spirit, there has been an open heaven. And if you've tasted once, you can taste again. So how much ever the enemy has built that wall or tried to rebuild that wall, that power of breakthrough, is upon us. If you here in this house, in this church, you're here because you've met God. This is a place of encounter. The land in which this temple is being built is you and I. We are the location where the temple is being built. And you and I are the greatest temple that God will ever build. Because he paid the highest price for you and I. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So what is God doing now? He's calling back the entire human race. In Genesis 2, the entire human race the entire human race was worshiping Yahweh. In Genesis 2, the entire human race was worshiping Yahweh. And the glory of the latter temple will be greater than the former. Hallelujah. We will see a time when there will be revival in every nation. And there will be a call given to every single person saying come 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 be the place where my glory dwells come be the habitation come be the place of my habitation David said I love the place of his habitation David would love me because we are the place of his habitation. Hallelujah. God is calling back the entire human race. 
Mountains are very important when you look. Moses went up the mountain, Horeb. And as he was up there, he got instructions from God on how to build his temple. How to train the entire people of Israel to move about the Ark of the Covenant, about how to host God's presence. You and I are mountain climbers. And God is teaching us, each one of us here, on how to build his temple. And when we come down from these mountain experiences, we are accountable to the truth that has been given to us. On how to build things his way. Are you with me? At the time of Nehemiah and Ezra, the temple had been destroyed. Worship had been destroyed. Sacrifice had been destroyed. And at the time of Nehemiah, the Lord comes and speaks to Nehemiah and says, Nehemiah, go back into the city. And he does not tell Nehemiah to build the temple. He tells Nehemiah to build a wall around the city so that the temple could come into place. Are you with me? He says to build a wall around the city. And a whole exodus of people came. And they said, we will build a wall. 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 And people started making fun of them. People started saying, stop. You guys are getting tired. Stop. Even your children are getting involved. Stop. They're not able to go to school. Stop. You're not able to go to work. And they stopped. And there were gaps in the wall. Until the entire wall could be built. The temple could not be rebuilt. Today, in this season, the mission of this church is to build a wall around the city. We are building a wall of prayer around the city. We are here to build a wall of prayer. We are in the times such as Nehemiah. The Lord is building a wall. And he's going to build that temple. He is. We are building a wall of prayer. And we need to finish the wall of prayer. Then the final temple will come. Are you with me? I'm not preaching in any style. I had no jokes, I'm sorry. I don't want to be the joke. When I get to heaven, I want God to say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's all I want to hear. Also want to hear how much he loves me. That's okay. I also want to hear how I was his favorite. That's also okay. You can ask for what you want. But I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I have been brought into this city for such a time as this. And somebody asked, why? Why are you guys praying? I said, I don't care if revival doesn't come to this house. I don't care. I would just want to be a part of it. If the Lord is moving somewhere, I'll go there. We're not, Rakesh and I were, might not be the best pastors in the world. We are really bad at home visits. We're not. But God has entrusted one thing. To build his temple. And that we will do. And we will be here. We will be here building this temple. We will be here. We will be here. And the Lord, he promised us. People who will have the same heart and the same vision. So don't grow weary. Don't go tired just because your figs are not having any blossom. Not your pigs. <laughs> and just because your vine is not giving you any wine. Don't. Stop building. 
don't stop building. What is revival? Knowing who you and I are. That is revival. Knowing who you are. Don't let the enemy steal your identity. Because if you lose your identity, you will lose your strength. You will not be able to stand when the vine fails. You will not be able to stand when the fig leaves fail. You will not be able to stand when there is no fruit. You will not be able to stand when there is no breakthrough. You will not be able to stand when there is no victory because you don't know who you are. But if you know who you are, you will know that he is Yahweh. He is God over you. He is the God who sees. He is the God who hears. And he's the God who answers. And you will not lose your strength. You will be strong, 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 strong. You will come into the house of the Lord leaping. Because you will know God is in the place. That's what you will know and you will come in. And we will sing, I know, I know he loves me. Whatever might be my circumstance. And you will build his wall. So that the temple can come into the city. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you something. You know how the Lord revealed this talk to me? This is the drawing. He said, this is the body of Christ. This is where the temple of God must be built. And then he said, write it down. So that's a blank page. I said, write it down. She wrote it down. This is what the Lord is speaking to us. He says, Zechariah 4 says, by the spirit. Not my might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. In Genesis 2, his spirit hovered over the chaos. Hovered over the chaos. And the Lord said, I need to create a man. I need to create a woman. Out of that clay, that chaos, they created a man. And he breathed life into it. And that man was given power and dominion over all the earth. And that man fell. So the greatest of all, Jesus Christ steps in. He purchases that land again. And then he takes that man once again. The great, 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 great grandson of that man. He takes him and then he breathes his life into him. He says, all power, all authority has been given to you. We are the place of the fellowship. We are the place of his abiding we are the place of his habitation why does God show a difference between those who serve God and those who don't because he's here he's here he's here he's here he's here and because he's here there's already a difference there's already a difference why does he hear us when we ask because he's here. Because he's here. And because he's speaking. Know who we are. Don't let the enemy take your face. Don't let the enemy take your identity. Don't let the enemy take that which is yours. Hallelujah. Moses climbed up that mountain and he said, show me your glory. I'm in the new covenant. I'm in his glory. Hallelujah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. Our joy is in proportion to our trust. Our trust is in proportion to our knowledge of who he is. And unless you come and know who he is, you won't trust who he is. Today I know that my God provides because he's provided. I know my God is Jehovah Rapha, my healer, because he's healed. 
I know that my God is resurrection because he's resurrected me. I know my God is salvation because he saved me. I know my God is peace because he's given me peace. That surpasses all understanding. I know that I know that I know. I know. Unless you know who he is, you can't trust him. And unless you trust him, you won't have joy. I love the people of the Bible. I love the people. I like this Job. You know, Job, I said it a couple of weeks ago. Job's story is not about his destruction, but it's about the Redeemer Christ. It is not a story of boo hoo 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 hoo. It is about yeah, 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 Yahweh. It's a story. Job said this. He says, For I know my Redeemer lives. It is about the redeeming power of Christ. Job said this, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Though the fig tree does not blossom, yet I will trust him. Though he slay me, I will trust him. Job had so much confidence in his power. He says, though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet I will rejoice. Yet in my flesh I shall see God. He's saying this, though the worms eat this body, though the worms eat the skin, yet my God, in, in this flesh God is able to restore, yet in this flesh I will trust in my God. In this flesh I will see my God. This is what the Bible says about Job. He says, though the skin worms eat my skin, yet in my flesh, I will see my God. Habakkuk, he knew his care, though the fig tree does not blossom, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Though, though my security, my investments, all that I've put faith in fail, yet, yet, say though, though. yet, yes. though. though, yet, I like David. David. How many of you like David? David gives me so much hope. Huh. No one, I mean, David says this, although my house be not so with God, yet, yet he has made me an everlasting covenant. So even if everything around you fails, even if your own household is walking away from God Almighty, even if everything in your life, every promise seems like no and no way, yet, David says, I will trust in the covenant-keeping word of God. Though, yet, though, yet, these were the men and women of God. Ezekiel says this, he says, though I am scattered with them, among the countries, yet I will be to them a little sanctuary. Ezekiel says, though I have been taken enslaved, I have been taken captive, yet I will still fulfill the purpose to which God has called me. I will be the sanctuary. I will be the city of refuge. I will be the place of hope. I will still yet fulfill the purpose to which God has called me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have confidence in God, in His power, in His word, and in His purpose, people. Though the fig tree does not blossom. Oh my gosh, I just love God. I love God. There are so many those and yes. You want to hear another one? It says, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. Sometimes you will sow into somebody's life. You'll build them up. You'll build them up. You'll build them up. You'll build them up. And then suddenly they have 10,000 fathers. And you'll think, but I birthed you in prayer. I birthed you. And the Lord is saying this. He says, put your confidence in him. Though yet. Though yet. Have confidence in your service. For what you have done. He will reward. For what you have done in the high hidden place, 
God will reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes, though, 2 Corinthians 4 says, though an outward man perish, he got the skin sagging, he got the graying, you got the cracking, okay? You've got so many things going, okay? Though the outward man may perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Hallelujah. I love the word of God. This is for some of us. Though I may be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, for we will know our God. Hallelujah. Some of us will only praise God in our strengths. The key is to praise God whatever your season is. Next week, I, d I don't know which service, I, I thought I was doing the 9 a.m., but I'm going to start a session on spiritual warfare. Okay? The Lord has taught on how to win victories. This is what he's taught me. And I'm going to teach you, entrust to you, faithful people, what he has taught me. So I, I'm not sure whether I'm doing the, I thought I was doing the 9 a.m., but if it's 11.30, you know, whichever one, come for the 9th, come. Five hours on a Sunday for God is okay. Tide your time. Be here at 9. Did you hear the rhyme? Hallelujah. What is it? I was a poet and did not even know it. We might even say that what we praise is our strength. If by his words or his life, Habakkuk showed that God was his strength, though the fig tree may not blossom, though the wine yield no fruit, Though the labor of the olives fail, yet I will rejoice in the Lord my strength. I will take joy, and he shall make my feet like that of a hind, and I will climb mountains. Why? It's who you are. You are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Rocky said it this morning. He said, if, if you come into God, the way you look at things will change. You won't say, oh, woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. The way you look at things will be like, whoa, wow, it's me. Because <laughs> we know that we have the victory. Just rhyming. Just like a flow here. But do you understand what I'm saying? Church, I don't know what your season is. But if it's anything like mine, my fig tree it's no longer a fig tree. It's become like a dead bush. And I'm wondering if that's what's going on in your life. But I'll tell you something. I'm here because I know where my source is. I know where my God is. And I know who is able to build my house. I trust him. The Lord said this. He said, you build my house, and I'll build yours. And I know that his plans for me are greater than what this little fig bush can, can produce. Hallelujah. So this is your season. He will make my feet like that of a deer's. You will never lose a step, and you won't fail. You won't fail. Take that fear away from you. Perfect love casts out all fear. You won't fail. 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 It is not in your destiny. It is not in your identity. Failure is not an option because the one who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. It is not an option. Don't let the enemy steal your face. 
Many are coming into the house of the Lord, milling around the pastor. And yet the enemy is stealing you and taking away your identity. It has to stop. It has to stop. So if you're struggling with your identity, if you're trying to still be like God, when you're already in the image of the living God, stop it. Or just stop. Just stop. Just stand up now. We're going to worship him. Though the fig tree may not blossom. Though, the, though nothing in my life is ever, is ever to turn, turn out. I will so praise him. But I tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I tell you it's something. I've got something to say. I do, I do, I do. I do, I do, I do. Psalm 27 verse 13 says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to just tell the Lord one thing I have desired of you, God. That will I seek, that I may dwell in your house all the days of my life. Oh, to behold your beauty, God. That my voice may proclaim with a voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Let the enemy use the same tactic used with Adam and Eve with you. By the very nature of your rebirth in Jesus Christ, you are in the image of your God. 